find that a lot of people um, forget to follow up or don't follow up. So I think there's a lot of helpful things that we can talk about tonight. And um, I have a little PowerPoint, so I'm going to share my screen so that we can um, maybe stay on task here. So bear with me as I pull it up. All right, guys, so um, have you ever heard the words, the fortunes in the follow-up? Those are, those are very, very true words, and I want you to all remember that because if we're not following up, we're not going to be successful in the business or helping other people change their lives with their health and such. So what um, would you say if I said um, there were um, a bunch of diamonds in your backyard, what would you do? Would you continue to dig for them and work hard? Or would you um, dig for a while and then give up? Well, I want you to look at this two ways, guys. Um, if you're an ambassador that signed up for the business opportunity, you need to continue to dig until you find that diamond in the rough, guys. You just want to continue to go, to grow and dig. Now, if you're somebody that is in this to um, do both, do well with the business as well as helping people change their, their health, then you're going to have to continue to dig and not give up because in this business, for every yes you get, you're probably going to get five no's. So you've got to continually work the business and continually follow up. So guys, always be digging and looking for that diamond in the rough. And that diamond can be a business builder or that diamond can be somebody that needs these products to change their health. So did you know that 80% of all purchases or signups are made within the 6 to 12 reintroduction to the products or the business? Um, some of you have probably heard this, but others of you probably haven't. So I want you to understand that when we follow up with people, um, it is helping them re be reintroduced to the products or the business. People get busy, and um, just think about yourself. Are you busy? Do you work? Do you have kids? Do you have a family? Um, all those things can add up. And even if you spoke to a potential and they were like, yes, I want to try the products. I definitely want to get on board with that. They get busy. So, and if you don't follow up, they might just forget. I can tell you, myself personally, I get busy and forget things on a daily basis, unfortunately. So if I tell somebody that I wanted to try their product or I wanted to go do this, that, or the other with them, and we didn't make a set date, I'm probably going to forget. So when they call to follow up with me and remind me, I am always grateful. So guys, just always remember 80% of all purchases or signups are made within the 6 to 12 reintroduction to the products or business. So that's really important to, to remember. So guys, if you're only doing one or two follow-ups, imagine all the business you're losing. Think of this as a bathtub. If you're not following up with your prospects and customers, it's the same thing as filling up your bathtub first without putting the stopper in the drain. So yeah, it's full a little bit, but it's always leaking out. So guys, if you're not putting that stopper in the drain and continuing to follow up with these people, you're losing out on a lot of prospects. And I promise you, somebody will come along and will follow up with them several times and they will um, probably get them to join them on the journey. So I want you to remember, always be following up with your prospects. Um, you need to have a way to keep track of your contacts and customer. Guys, this is important. Um, <clears throat> so many people I find out say, you know, Dusty, I have all my uh, customers and stuff. They're all in my back office. And I just, whenever I remember, I randomly message them or I randomly call them. Well, guess what? You could just do that today, and then if you don't have a way to log what day you talked to them last, 
unfortunately, time goes by fast, and it could be two weeks before you remember to follow up with somebody again, or a month. I mean, time goes by. So you need to have a way to keep track of this. So the first way I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you three different examples. And um, if you don't have a system in place already, then I would suggest that um, you get one. <laughs> Maybe use one of these three that we're going to talk about here. So the first example would be to get um, a monthly, weekly, daily planner. You know, a planner that has something of, of each thing in there. Um, I have a day planner. That's my choice. It's what I love. Um, and whenever I say I um, contact Jeannie and say I called her on um, the 1st, which was a Friday, and I introduced her to Plexus and what I was doing, and I was really excited, and I was talking to her about it, and she's like, yeah, you know, um, I'm real interested, um, but I don't have time to talk right now. Um, maybe we can talk later, you know, so I'm going to say, all right, you know, how about we, do you have time on the 5th? That's this coming Tuesday. Um, can we talk then? And um, so she's probably going to say, yes, I can, you know, if she, even if she isn't, um, you know, I'll find a day that she can. But so I'm going to write her down on the 5th. I'm going to write down what time I'm going to contact her. Um, say it's a customer that's already ordered. And um, so say your customer orders on the 1st. And you're going to write down, you know, Jeannie ordered on the 1st. And then you're going to say, okay, I want to follow up her, follow up with her after her first week. So you write down her name on the 8th and say, I need to follow up with Jeannie and um, check in on her and make sure how she did on her first week. Because that's going to be really important to follow up with your customers and make sure they're taking the products correctly. I'm hoping that when she placed the order on the first, that I was responsible enough, and I hope you all are too, to send her a product sheet and tell her how to take the products. So then I'm going to write down on the eighth, then I'm going to follow up with her, and I'm going to check in on her with her product use. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to write down, I'm going to check in with her on the 22nd. I'm going to give her two full weeks, but let her know. If she needs anything in those first, in those two weeks and I'm not going to contact her, she needs to know that she can contact me with any questions at all. So those are just something good that you can do for um, this type of a, uh, just a great uh, planner, you know, a daily planner. Um, the second example would be um, a 1 to 31 fast order. This is something I used to use in my old job that I had. Um, what you can do with this is you just uh, you can type up a piece of paper that has your um, potential or your customers information on it you know their name and um, what products they're using if it's a customer and what day you last talked to them say you talked to them on the first and you want to follow up with them on the the seventh so you would take their name out from the first and put it in the seventh so that you would know that those would be the days of the month so this is just another great way that you can keep track. So after you talk to somebody on the 1st, you'd move their paper to the 7th. After you talk to them on the 7th, you might move it to the 21st if they're a new customer. Or And then after that, you can just say, okay, so I'm going to follow up with them, you know, every three weeks or whatever. And then you just move it to whatever date that is. And so that you would just go get this fast order, open it on, if it's the first of the month, you're going to open it to the first. If it's the second month, day of the month, you're going to open to the second. So you'd know what each day was and who you were going to talk to. So these are just examples of how that you can keep track of them. We're going to talk more about what, we're, what we can say to follow up with people, but these are just systems that you can use to keep track. So you can either use the day planner or you can use this fast start short, um, 1 to 31 fast sorter to keep it organized for you. Or here's a third example. I find a lot of people like this. Um, all it is is like a recipe box. And instead, I know that you're looking there and you're seeing the A through Z letters. Instead of the A through Z, you can find cards that say, you know, that are blank and you can write 1 through 31. So those would be the days of the week. And you can just go get some note cards and you can write your customers down on that or you can write potential names down on that and poke them in on the days that you spoke to them. You know, you write down what days you spoke to them, and then you put them into the next day that you want to follow up. So these are great examples of something that you can use to keep yourself on track. I think any one of these three works well. It just boils down to um, your type of what fits you best. With me, it's my day planner because it goes with me everywhere and I can write down stuff really quick and easy. 
with others, I find they absolutely love the note card follow-up system and other people actually love that one to 31 fast sorter. So it just depends on what works for you. So I wanted to give you an example of something that you could use to keep yourself on track with checking in with your potentials, people that are not ordered from you yet and such, and um, with people that are already your customers. You need to have a system in place to keep you on track because when you're on track and have a great system, success will follow. If you're scatterbrained, unorganized, then your customers are gonna fall off because they didn't get taken care of and your potentials are probably gonna slip away like the bathtub we talked about because you're not following up with them. So it's important to have um, a system in place. So let's talk about some of the ways, how do you follow up? Like how do you talk to people or what do you do? Um, when on the phone or in person guys, always ask them um, an ending question. Say if, you, say if I called Jeannie and I'm very excited and I'm talking to her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got, I'm involved with Plexus. And I'm talking to her because she like this because she is my friend. And um, with a friend, you're always going to be personable and friendly, obviously. So I, with her, I'm going to be a little more candid. I'm going to call her up and I'm gonna say, you know, Jeannie, I got involved with this great company and I'm so excited about it. And this is what it did for me. And I would love um, to see you try it because I know you have this, that, and the other. And what if it worked for you? And what if you made some extra money, you know? And um, she might say, okay, that's great. I need a little more information, right? So um, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to end the conversation. Okay, I would love to call you and meet up with you like on Thursday at three. Would that work for you? It's always good to end the conversation with something like that by setting up the actual day and time, guys. Um, because if you leave it open-ended and say, okay, you know, Jeannie, I will talk to you later. Just give me a call when you get a chance. If you leave the conversation like that, she might forget. She gets busy because she had life. But if you say, you know, I'm going to meet up with you Thursday or I'm going to call with you, call you at Thursday at three with that work. And she says, heck yeah, I'm going to write it down in my day planner or whatever follow up system I have. And that's going to keep me on track. And I'm going to call her back on Thursday. So that's a great way for you guys to, um, to be speaking with somebody that is, you know, too busy to, for you to talk with at the moment. Let's talk about some other things. Um, when you're following up with somebody that you've already set the appointment with, say it's not over the phone, say you've messaged somebody, either an email or you've PM them over Facebook. Um, so you've let them know about Plexus. They asked you for some more information and you sent it. Now you're going to message them again and you're, you're following up with them, right? So this will be, you know, probably the second or third exposure. So you just want to reiterate, remind them of how you can help them, um, remind them and relate it to them that we have life changing products and a great business opportunity. So if this person you spoke with is, um, uh, say they said, um, you know, I'm just having problems with food cravings, um, then you want to reiterate in the uh, message to them, hey, uh, remember our Slim is great for curbing sugar cravings and carb cravings just a great um, all around health product that also helps you um, crave less foods. So that might be a follow up something that you would send to them. So make it relate to them. So let's talk about something else. Um, when you can follow up another time if they haven't um, purchased or whatever, say they said, oh, okay, great, I'm so glad you checked in. You know, so you're following up again the next time. So you want to share ideas and insights. So you might say, you know, Pat, I've been thinking more about how we might be able to help your issue. And you could insert whatever the issue is. Say it's the food cravings. I thought I might, that you might be interested in what we did for X, Y, Z. Meaning, you know, uh, say you find your friend, you could insert your friend's name or find a testimony. Um, and, and when they were dealing with the same issue, the same challenge, do you have a few minutes for a quick conversation? And um, they're, either going to be free to do it or not. But that's another suggestion you could do to re-engage them whenever you're following up. Um, you want to, another thing is you want to continue to educate them when you're talking to people, you know, um, <clears throat> cause sometimes your prospects are still asking themselves, does this make sense to move forward or not? You know, from the outside, you may not be able to tell sometimes if you're 
in the room with them or whatever. You can tell by their body language. But if you're over the phone or something, you can't tell. But you can keep giving them more reasons um, to try it and see if it'll change for them. So you want to educate them on the products that will help with their issue or the business if, business if that was their focus. So in other words, you just keep relating it back to whatever their problem was or if they want the business, you just keep talking um, and educating them on Plexus. Um, so you just want to keep engaged with them and, and keep them interested. So it's not like you're just messaging them saying, hey, it's me again. Are you ready to try this? Um, that works sometimes with some people, but sometimes when it takes the few exposures to these people, they need that education. They need that um, little personalization. And, and I want you to understand that people, whenever they understand that you truly care and that you truly want to help them, they will come over to your side. They will become the believer and they will um, join you in this journey. So it, it's all about building the relationships and continue to educate and continue to follow up. You know, say the person orders and doesn't respond to you, to your follow-ups. This happens, I find, is a question that I get a lot. Um, so the person ordered the Slim and Accelerator because they were after weight loss and they've been on the products for um, two months and they quit responding to you you know you message them and they just haven't gotten back to you what do you do well this is what I do and it seems to have a very very good success rate ask them a question that comes back on yourself so whenever I message this person that bought the summon accelerator and um, nothing came back for a while I'm gonna say okay I was just following up to see if you could help me out I'm working on my personal training and I was hoping you could answer some questions for me. It would really help me out. And so I'm going to ask them a question. I'm going to post that and then underneath that, I'm going to say, I know you take the slim and accelerator. I would love to know what you've noticed in the last two months. I would love to know what you liked best about it. And um, usually if you ask it in that manner, they are your friends. And they want to help you out because you've put it in the aspect of help me get more educated. Okay. So just put it back in a manner that puts it back on you because um, it takes the pressure off of them. So they think that they're helping you out and they are because one, you're getting educated, but two, you're finding out what the real issue is. And nine times out of 10, they've had a struggle with it and um, they're just afraid to tell you that they're struggling with it. And then I'm gonna ask them, okay, so um, how do you take it? Tell me how you take the product. Even though I've already told them how to take it, I wanna know how they're actually taking it. And nine times out of 10, they've kind of just changed it up and they haven't been consistent with it. So it kind of re-engages them whenever you ask them to help you out. So I hope maybe that helped you guys out on something that you can do for them. Now let's talk about um, three-day trials and thank you cards. These can be great follow-up systems for you guys. This three-day trial pack, they're wonderful. I find out a lot of people don't know how to use them right, though. Um, whenever you use the trial pack, guys, um, say you, you sell one to your friend. I sell this to Jeannie. I'm like, here, Jeannie, here's a three-day trial pack. It is, um, you know, $12 for one or um, $20 for two. So you can choose whichever you like. Now, why I sell them versus giving them away. Now, I won't say I won't, haven't given them away. I have given them away in the past. But I find that selling them is better because people have invested in these. And if they have invested money in them, they're more likely to use them. If I gave this away to Jeannie and if she wasn't real serious, she's liable to take this and throw it on her desk and put the mail on top of it and forget she even had it. And if she paid for it, she's probably going to use it. So I meet her and I get the product or she orders it off my website, either way, I'm gonna say, okay, let me know what day you got the product. I'm gonna keep eye if she ordered it because I'll know what day it was delivered. Also, if I sold it to her, I'm gonna hand deliver, if, you know, if I see her person, I'm gonna hand deliver it and say, okay, it's um, Monday, so here's the product. You're probably gonna start it tomorrow, Tuesday, right? So um, when you start this Tuesday, just do the Slim alone. On Wednesday, do the Slim and One Accelerator. And on Thursday, do the slim and two accelerators. What this is gonna teach you is what dosing is correct for you and you'll know how you felt on each day. Now, guess what? When I sold her this three day, 
I know she's going to be finishing on Thursday, right? So I'm going to get out my little follow-up system and I'm going to write down in there that I'm going to contact Jeannie on Thursday. But I'm also going to tell her when I hand her this, I'm going to call you Thursday, find out what it was that you loved best about the product. All right. So there's an open-ended follow-up for you to get back in touch with them. And they're excited by that third day when they use the product because they told you what they like best about it. And then you can say, okay, are you ready to get started on your, your order? You know, or are you in love with it and want to become an ambassador? So it gives you a way to follow up. So guys, I hope that that helped you out. I found a lot of people that didn't know about the whole follow up on the third day. And you can apply that with the seven day trial as well. You can say, okay, you know, you bought this on Monday, you started on Tuesday, I'm going to follow up on the seventh day and find out what you liked best. So it can be used in either way. Now, thank you cards. What are thank you cards? I love my thank you cards. I think they're so cute. Um, what this is when a customer orders from me, um, obviously their information is in my back office. So I'm going to quickly grab my little thank you card here. And on the back, it has, you know, just it's like a little postcard. So I'm just going to thank them for their order. I'm going to tell them how appreciative I am and that I'm here for anything that they need. It's just another follow-up to let people know that you care. Do you have to do these? No. That's a choice for you. If you want to do them, I think it's great. If you can't do them right now, that's okay. As your business grows, you'll be able to do things like this. So it's just another little way to follow up and show people that you care. So I think um, thank you cards are a great option. Um, guys, I want you to understand those things are all things that you can put in place for your potentials, for potential customers, potential ambassadors, and, and, and customers as well. So you, a, a great follow-up system is important. But I want you to understand it's not just for customers and potentials. You need to remember if you're a Plexus business builder, which means you have distributors underneath you, you need to have a follow-up in place for your ambassadors as well. Um, get a notebook and write down all your level ones in it and write down their names and write down their strengths because you want to utilize those people's strengths. Let them lead different things and you want to know things about them. Obviously, they're probably your friends and you probably know things about them, but write down their strengths so that you can use them later. Um, you want to have a day that you check in with them. Um, some people on my team, uh, I just talk to on a daily basis, so I don't have an exact day that I contact them. But there are people that don't contact me on a daily basis that I reach out to and, and talk to. And so I keep that in my notebook. Um, so reach, and I want to let you understand this. Reach down through your levels and find your runners. What does this mean? Well, I have lots of wonderful level ones. But not all my level ones are ones that want to work the business as hard as me or people that just sign up to get wholesale prices. And that's okay. I love them. But they may have signed up somebody that wants to work the business. And um, so you need to have a follow-up program in place so that you reach down <coughs> to those new ambassadors, build a relationship with them, and so that you can work with them if for some reason their sponsoring ambassador does not want to do this. So I encourage you to build a relationship with um, your at least your first four levels, okay? If your organization is smaller, you can reach down to the first seven and, and let them know who you are and introduce yourself. But as your organization gets bigger, at least your first four levels. I can tell you that I try to build a relationship with every one of my first four levels um, when they sign up and I get a you got money email I will send them an email introducing myself and letting them know that I may not I'm not their sponsoring ambassador however I'm their upline and I'm here to help support them and I let them know I have a team page and if they're not a part of it I want them to be added to it and I just let them know that just so they know they have support I do also let them know that if they do have a sponsoring ambassador that's running with the business, absolutely they need to work closely with them. But I want that relationship with them because maybe their ambassador might be busy one day and they need to get a hold of somebody one day. They know that they have a relationship with me and they can reach up and I will be here to help them. So I always encourage a follow-up system with your ambassadors as well. There's other tips that um, I'm sure each one of you have, 
and I want to hear about them. Other people want to hear about them because I believe there's many people on this team, guys, that have great ideas, not just myself and some of the people that I got these tips from. So what I'm going to do tonight is after we're done with the meeting and, um, you know, we always record it, I'm going to place it in the training groups and, um, after it's placed, if you have a, a follow-up idea or suggestion or something that you do that could be helpful, I would love for each one of you to comment in the comment section of where this is posted because teamwork makes a dream work and I believe every one of you have great ideas. So we want to um, see you share them. And so because tonight that we try to keep the call, the call at 30 minutes or less, and I'm almost up on, up on my time. I just have a couple minutes. This was just a short overview of follow-up. I hope that it did help many of you, and I want you to understand, build the relationships with your team, but build the relationships with your customers and ambassadors. And, and, and potentials as well because happy customers make amazing ambassadors some of you may not know this guess what I was a customer before I was an ambassador and I was a very very happy customer that wanted to share it with everybody so um, keep in contact with all those customers put those follow-ups in place get yourself organized so that you have a way to keep up with them so guys, I hope this was helpful. And like I said, we'll have this recorded and we'll have it posted in the groups um, very quickly. Um, guys, we always like to end each training each night with a little prayer. So I just want to quickly do that for each and every one of you guys. I just want to bless you all and thank you all for being on the call tonight. And Lord, we just pray nothing but good things in these people's lives and their businesses as well and their health. And we pray that, that you just bring the right people to us. Um, so that we can help them in whatever they need, be it financial, be it health. Um, we just pray we glorify you in everything we do. We pray that people have open minds and they're accepting to what we have to offer with our amazing products and our amazing company. Lord, we just thank you every day for this opportunity laid at our feet. And we thank you um, every day for the people that are involved in our organizations. And um, we just pray in your awesome name. Amen. So thank you guys so much for tonight, for giving me 30 minutes of your time. I know it was a sacrifice, but those that show up, go up. So um, y'all have a blessed night.